you guys seem to really enjoy the last video that I did similar to this. It was called five underrated PS2 games. So now we're going to be looking at five underrated PS4 games. Just a few things I wanted to clarify before we get into this. Similar to the last video, this isn't like the five most underrated PS4 games, if that makes sense. This is just like five games that I feel like are underrated on the PS4. So if you guys want to follow up to this video, I'd be more than happy to do so. And also another thing I wanted to clarify, these games aren't like exclusive to PS4. I mean, some of them are exclusive to the PS4, but some of these games are available on other platforms. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into it. Hey, before we get too far into the video, just a friendly reminder that this channel is partnered with Boosteroid. If you go down to the description, the top link is an affiliate link to Boosteroid's site. When you use my link, not only does it help me out, but it also tells Boosteroid that I'm a worthwhile partner to keep around. So I really appreciate it if you guys could go down there, sign up, check out the service. For those of you that don't know, Boosteroid is a cloud gaming service. And if you want like my full review and my full thoughts on it, I'll have a card right up here that you guys can kind of just go click and watch my review on. It's not too long, but it covers everything that you need to know. Anyways, let's get back to the video. So the first game that I picked is Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Now you might be looking at this and it's like, hey, is this really underrated? And honestly, I do believe so because when everybody talks about like, you know, classic platformer remasters, especially on like the PS4 and Xbox One, everybody talks about like, you know, the Crash Insane Trilogy and Crash Team Racing, but rarely do I hear people talk about Spyro. I mean, there is people that talk about the Spyro Reignited Trilogy, but I don't know. I just, I feel like it doesn't get talked about enough. Basically, this is the original three Spyro games from the PS1 remastered for the PS4, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch. As you can see on the back there, it's got the original Spyro, Spyro Ripto's Rage, and then Spyro Year of the Dragon. These games, all three of them are obviously classic. See, I grew up with the original Spyro games on the PS1, as well as the PS2 Spyro games like Spyro Heroes Tale. So when I heard that this was coming out, I was beyond hyped for it, and I picked it up as soon as I could. This is a genre that I genuinely miss. I mean, you still have like, you know, your indies that are making these collect-a-thon type games, and also like, you know, the SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated and SpongeBob Cosmic Shake, you know, those are in the same vein as this, you know, the classic 3D collect-a-thon, but you know, I, I wish that there was more games like this coming out, but in the same breath, the fact that games like these aren't made as often nowadays does kind of make them a novelty and does make games like this unique when they do come out. If you haven't played the original Spyro games, this is a great way to get into them. All three of these games are genuine classics and they're all genuinely fantastic. Next up, we have the Crew Wild Run, or you know, just the Crew one. This is essentially just a different edition of it that comes with like, you know, DLTs and more cars and stuff like that. Where do I start with the crew? I remember picking this game up back at launch on the Xbox One and playing with my friends. And, you know, I have a lot of fun with this game every single time that I played it. In fact, when this game first launched, I played nothing but this game for literal weeks on end. I have put literal hundreds of hours into this game. Whether you're playing alone, playing with your friends, it's always, I just, I've always loved the concept of this game. Like you get in your car, you pick your car and you can drive across the entirety of the United States. Obviously it's scaled down a bit. It's not like you're actually driving like the whole entirety of the United States. Like it's not the entire country in the game. It's, it's a bit scaled back, but still it's a huge map. Like sure you are able to drive technically from like California to Florida in a matter of like 20 to 30 minutes, but still it was super ambitious. And I also love the crew too. The crew too was amazing. And there's another one coming out soon that I will be picking up as soon as I get the chance. Like I said, this is available on literally every single platform. So it doesn't matter if you're on PS4, Xbox One, PC. This game goes for relatively cheap. You can probably pick up a copy for like 10 bucks on eBay. One other feature worth noting is that, okay, around like 2013 to 2014, I had this weird fascination with racing games that allowed you to play in like first person, like first person behind the wheel, like uh, Forza Motorsport, Forza Horizon, and the crew allowed you to do that. So I was always in first person, just, you know, driving around the country. This game does have a story mode, but I don't know, man. Whenever I'm playing this game, I just, I like driving. I like cruising. It's a good way for me to decompress. Next up, we have Battlefield Hardline, a criminally underrated first person shooter and probably the most underrated entry in the Battlefield series. Now, I know that, you know, this might be a little controversial. It's like, Battlefield, that's a pretty big FPS. How is that underrated? But I'm serious. Out of any entry in the Battlefield series, this one is hands down the most underrated. Essentially, it's like a spin on your classic cops and robbers show. If I'm gonna be honest, I didn't play a whole lot of the multiplayer in this game. I played a couple matches and there's still people that play to this day, but whenever I revisit this game or whenever like I wanna play it, I'm playing it for that story mode. Granted, it's not too lengthy. I reckon you could probably beat it in about, I don't know, five or six hours tops. That being said, this is another one that goes for like six, seven dollars, maybe on eBay. The story mode is an absolute blast. Again, it's like a cops and robbers show and you're playing it from the perspective of the cops. However, it's not as cut and dry as it seems. As you'll see as you play the game, the, you know, the cops, they aren't as clean as they seem. Some of them are actually a bit more corrupt than even the robbers themselves. And no, that isn't a spoiler. You can pick that up just from watching the trailers. <laughs> 
it's also a bit of like a detective mystery element to it and uh, let me just say that you definitely won't be expecting what happens towards the end of the story at least i wasn't next up we have days gone oh my gosh okay this game is criminally underrated like seriously so many people don't go in this game just because it had a rough launch and yes that is completely justified i'm always sitting here preaching about the fact that like i hate the way that most triple a modern games release if i could have it my way we wouldn't be relying on updates to fix the games like sure updates are nice to you know fix certain bugs or patch out certain things in the game when needed but you know i hate the way that games release nowadays how as soon as you pop the disc in you gotta wait for that day one patch half the time the game that you actually get on the disc isn't even complete that being said despite the state that it launched in and despite everything else if you go back and revisit this game now it is just I, I do, do I call it a masterpiece? You know what? That's not even a question in my mind. Yes, I'm going to say it. Days Gone is in fact a masterpiece. I don't know, there's something about this game, like from the time that I started it, it just clicked with me. When, when, like when the game opens up and you're driving around on your motorcycles with Boozer, there's something about this game and the way that the characters are portrayed and the way that they're written, they just, they clicked with me. And, and it's, it's like, I, I just, I felt that connection with the characters and to the world, like the entire way through the story. Like I was so deeply immersed in the story. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I kind of no lifed it and I beat the game in about like, three or four days. And mind you, this is like a 30 to 40 hour game. <laughs> I have a really similar story with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I beat that game in five days. And if you know what to think about the length of that game, yeah, I wasn't really doing anything for those five days besides playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. <laughs> but anyway, back to Days Gone. If you dunked on this game just because the state that it released in, or if you weren't too sure on it back in the day, please just go back to it and please see it all the way through to the end because I'm not going to spoil anything. However, let's just say that there's a certain gameplay element that is introduced in the third act of the game, like a solid 20 to 25 hours in, where it's just like, oh my gosh, um, oh, okay. I don't know how else to explain it, because, I, I mean, that was literally just my reaction to it the first time that it happened. I was like, oh gosh, okay, this is happening, let's go. Some people criticize this game because that feature was, like, heavily advertised in the marketing, but then it didn't show up until, like, the third act. However, for me, I feel like... If they would have made it a bigger part of the game, it could have ran the risk of becoming repetitive or kind of like, oh, okay, we're doing this thing again by the time that you get to the end of the game. But the fact that they like save their cards for the end of the game and then they just kind of like hit you with it and it's used very sparingly. You only, and, like if you seek it out, you can do it multiple times in the open world. But in terms of the story, you're only forced to do it in the story a handful of times. And the way that they kind of like drip feed it to you like throughout the game, like you don't know if you're actually going to end up coming into contact with the, the certain thing i'm trying to be as spoiler free as possible with this but by the time that you get to the end of the game and you actually like you know come into contact with it and you actually have to fight it it's just like oh my gosh this game honestly had me on the edge of my seat for basically the entirety of the playthrough even for the slower moments by the time that i got to the ending i was i, I genuinely shed a tear of joy it was just it, it was it, it's one of those things where i feel like everybody needs to experience it at least once that goes for a lot of like sony exclusives like god of war 2018 horizon zero dawn the last of us games Days Gone, just a lot of these PlayStation exclusives are honestly just chef's kiss masterpieces. Now, for this last one, this, it, it genuinely hurts that this one is as underrated as it is. However, there's a reason why this game is so underrated, and we'll talk about that. So, if you remember back in 2020, there was a certain game called Avengers that released, and, uh... Yeah, not everybody was so hot on it between the live service elements and the lack of endgame content. Personally, the lack of endgame content really didn't bother me. Oh gosh, I hope you're okay. That was the sound of the case dropping, but thankfully it seems like it's okay. But as I was saying, the lack of endgame content really didn't bother me. I'm the type of guy when I'm playing a game, I don't really care about endgame content or bonus content or whatever. I'm there for the story, like, I'm there for the main path. I want to get through the main quest. Uh, you know, occasionally, you know, I'll veer off and do, like, side quests, side content if it really interests me, but otherwise... I'm sticking to the main path, I'm sticking with the main story up until the credits roll. And then once the credits roll, that's usually when I put a game down. I don't really see the need to replay most games or dive back in for more unless there's like an actual reason to. Like in Resident Evil 4 Remake, uh, that, that was my one exception where as soon as I beat it, I started up a new playthrough just because like I, I couldn't help myself. Resident Evil 4 and now Resident Evil 4 Remake are both my favorite games of all time. But before I start gushing about that, let's get back on track. But with Avengers, while I personally actually love that game and love that story, I can understand why some people didn't. That being said, due to to that game's rocky reception uh the next game that came from square enix basically just went below the radar and anybody that has played the game knows how amazing it is and it has since picked up in sales however 
it definitely never got the attention that it deserved right off the bat and you know I, I won't tease it anymore it's guardians of the galaxy this game is truthfully amazing i don't want to call it like rts elements but it kind of does have that like when you're in battle you got like certain elements of strategy because obviously you're playing a star lord and you can like command some of your teammates between like combining different moves pulling off different combos and attacks different styles of attacks and you as star lord like you have different ways to attack you can use your guns you can go melee and it's honestly a really satisfying and engaging combat loop and then after you're fighting for a bit you and your squad can like pull off like this super special move there's a lot that i want to say about this game but considering the fact that this game is so story driven and even like the gameplay elements tie in so heavily to the story there's not a whole lot i can say about it besides the fact that if Avengers left you a little sore, you know, if it left you kind of doubting Square Enix and Marvel games, don't let that deter you from playing Guardians of the Galaxy because this game is truthfully a masterpiece. The story is nothing short of amazing. The gameplay is amazing. The dialogue is amazing. The characters are amazing. Like this game is just, it, they absolutely nailed it. And plus, can we just like take a minute to admire this cover art together? Like this cover art is genuinely beautiful. So please, even if you're a little sore after Avengers and you're not so sure, please just, just give this one a chance. I promise it's different. I honestly really have the urge to replay this one. I beat it back in the 2021. Like shortly after it launched, I kind of just like sat down, got through it and like, uh, it was like two days, I think. That was almost like two years ago at this point. So man, I don't know. I'm thinking about diving back in. Yeah, I don't dive in that soon for most games, but that, hey, if that doesn't tell you how special this game is, then I don't know what will. Oh, and that soundtrack? beautiful. But anyway, yeah, last time I kind of dragged things out for a little too long, if I'm going to be honest, and I kind of almost went into spoiler territory with some of my things. So in this video, I try to be a bit more vague, tell you just enough about the game and show off like trailers of the game without going too in depth or possibly ruining anything or just, you know, dragging the video out for too long. So these are five underrated PS4 games. Again, these aren't like the five most underrated PS4 games. These are just five underrated games. So, you know, if you guys want to follow up to this video, just let me know. If you want to follow up on a different console, let me know. All of these games go for relatively cheap. None of them are are necessarily too expensive guardians of the galaxy is the only one where i feel like it probably you definitely would have like held up in its value over time i don't think you'll be picking that one up for like 10 bucks on ebay but for all the other ones yeah you could probably pick them up for about 10 to 15 tops anyway yeah after watching this video are you planning to pick up any of these games or check any of them out have you played any of these games do you agree that these are underrated whatever it is whatever you're thinking i'd definitely love to hear from you guys anyway as always a shout out to the patrons and channel members come straight grandma liberties have big dynamite many chalupas rex rex ray zach polar ray to upset the boss beyond cost purgatory jupes on middle last king who imagine me the service to 15 flimson one aaron Reynolds, unknown, and Christopher Horita. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.